Operation Barbarossa, the largest military operation in history, started at 3.15 a.m. on the 22nd of June 1941 with heavy bombardment on Soviet Red Army positions by 6,000 cannons, bombing of airfields, communication centers, fuel reserves, and military installations by Luftwaffe aircraft and the invasion of German ground forces with their Romanian allies began by crossing the command border with the Soviet Union. In this situation, the repeated and emphatic orders of the Soviet High Command on not inciting the Germans to hostile actions took the necessary initiative from the Soviet forces. The weak presence of the Soviet forces in most cases along the border caused the surprise of the high-ranking German commanders. The lack of information about the conditions of the front line due to the interruption or disruption of communication had caused the Soviet leaders to order counter-attacks to units that were already destroyed or were not able to carry it out. Based on the lightning war tactical doctrine and in order to establish air superiority and prepare the necessary conditions, the German attack began with an all-out attack by Luftwaffe aircraft on enemy airfields. In total, they attacked by 500 bombers, 270 dive bombers, and 480 fighters against 66 Red Army frontline airfields, destroyed 1,489 Soviet aircraft on the ground, and another 322 in the sky on the first day. The Luftwaffe second air fleet destroyed almost all of the Soviet air forces in the central sector. This force destroyed a total of 2,500 Soviet aircraft within a week. In total, the Soviets lost 2,000 aircraft within the first three days and 4,000 aircraft by the end of the first week, reducing the largest air force in the war to an ineffective force. The first stage of the invasion consists of Battle in Baltic region Battle in Bialystok Minsk Battle in Molodowa and Western Ukraine, battle in the far north, in the Finland-Soviet border. In the first three weeks of Operation Barbarossa, the Wehrmacht managed to advance 480 kilometers, captured Belarus, the Baltic region, large parts of Ukraine, reached the Dnieper River, and destroyed several large Soviet fortifications and formations along the border. The casualties inflicted on the Soviet Union were very heavy. By mid-July, nearly a million Soviet Red Army troops were killed, wounded, or missing. The country had lost nearly 10,000 tanks and 4,000 aircraft, and only 10% of its mechanized forces remained. On the other side, during this period, 92,000 people were killed in the Wehrmacht. The victories of Army Group Center at this stage were stunning, but the achievements of the other two Army Groups were nothing like it. In the northern part, receiving the auxiliary force of the Soviet Northwestern Front enabled it to organize a suitable resistance along the Dewina River against the Northern Army Group and launch powerful counter-attacks. In the southern sector, the forces of the Southern Army Group faced intense and extensive counter-attacks by the enemy's mechanized corps. At this time, the activity of the remaining forces of the Red Army behind the front lines in the form of partisan groups was creating problems and the resistance of its forces was becoming more and more intense and it was more difficult for the Germans to advance. The second stage of the invasion consists of Battle in front line center in western Russia. Battle in south of the front line in Kiev. Battle in eastern Ukraine and Crimea. Battle in north of the front line in Estonia. Battle in northwest Russia in Leningrad. Battle in Karelia. By the end of the second phase, the Wehrmacht had achieved great victories. It had advanced 800 kilometers on the 1,650 kilometer long front line deep in the Soviet territory. In the process of this advance, the western and southwestern fronts of the Soviet Union were completely destroyed and a heavy blow was inflicted on the three northwestern, southern, and Bryansk fronts. During this time, the Germans had captured the key cities of Smolensk and Kiev, surrounded Leningrad, and were preparing to attack Moscow. 
Still, the proposed six to eight week timetable for the Soviet compilation had passed and there was no sign of an end to the war. Three months had passed since the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, but none of its important objectives had been achieved. In this situation, the long flanks of the German forces were the target of intense counter-attacks by the Red Army and the lack of ammunition of supplies, along with the physical weakness weakened the attackers' forces, inflicted heavy casualties on them, and slowed down the advance. German forces had lost 535,000 people until September 26. At the same time, 1,600 Luftwaffe aircraft were destroyed and another 1,000 were damaged. The third stage consists of Battle of Moscow. Before the end of the Battle of Kiev, on September 6, Hitler issued Führer Decree No. 35, which initiated another major offensive by Army Group Sender for the end of September. Germans believed that it was still possible to avoid the Winter War and that this major invasion would eventually bring down the Soviet Union. The Wehrmacht's autumn offensive on Moscow, known as Operation Typhon, began on October 2. The purpose of this operation was to destroy the three fronts protecting Moscow and then advance and encircle the enemy's capital. The hard blow of the first phase of Operation Typhon to the Soviet defenders had opened a gap of more than 300 kilometers between their positions in front of Moscow. The approach of Wehrmacht forces to the capital caused several days of chaos in the city. On October 15, Stalin ordered the mass evacuation of Moscow, although Stalin himself was still in the capital. Thousands of its residents were displaced. On October 19, siege conditions were announced in Moscow. In the invasion of Barbarossa, within about six months, the Wehrmacht advanced 1,200 km on the front line and captured 1.5 million square kilometers, 40% of the population and 35% of the Soviet production capacity subjugated. With all hope of a quick victory against the Soviet loss, Germans' only option was to find a solution to win in the long run. Due to the attrition and casualties inflicted on Wehrmacht, German ground forces were no longer capable of a strategic offensive along the entire Eastern Front. Hence, the only realistic option for Germany was to attack from a single front. Therefore, Germany decided to attack the southern parts of the Soviet Union, to cut off the Soviet oil resources and provide Germany with this material. The Germans reached the Volga River in the North Caucasus, but in this situation their front lines were too wide and led to disaster in the Battle of Stalingrad. Ended defeating the Third Summer Offensive in 1943 in just a few days. Germany completely lost the strategic initiative. From this point until the end of the war, Germany was entirely on the defensive situation. Many thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel and like and share this video.